Bonne locale, my garden of roses. Donald Trump just shortly ago finished his speech at the Davos Economic, World Economic Forum, and I must say it was quite impressive. The president came into Davos yesterday like a rock star, uh, with people praising and clapping for him quite intensely. And it comes as little surprise to anyone who's actually paying attention instead of letting CNN and the New York Times dictate their narratives. Because the tax reform package provided by Trump not only benefited Americans, but improved the world economy and international business. He blew away the audience today with a rousing and powerful speech which acknowledged the United States' place in global markets without sacrificing his America First policies and ideals. Now, the speech wasn't oriented towards the average person, and the subtlety of it might be lost on some. However, he turned on his salesman's charm while he was up there, speaking in a manner that would be understood and appreciated by the global-oriented business giants and political leaders within the audience. Mr. Klaus Schwab introduced the president with grand praise, praising the tax reform plan, stating that it greatly reduced taxes on corporations, fostering job creation, and stimulating economic growth not only in the U.S., but a boost to the world economy as well. He also praised the president's strong leadership and asked the audience to put aside bias for him for the sake of open dialogue. The president spoke about the U.S. economic growth, the nearly $7 billion in wealth created by the record-breaking state of the stock market, and 2.4 million jobs created under his presidency. And just as I predicted, Donald Trump stated that he will always put America first, just as every leader should put their nation first, and also clarified that America first doesn't mean America alone. That he, the place that America has in the world economy being the single largest economic power, well, the single largest honest economic power with China very close up our asses, but constantly manipulating the world markets and operating under very unfair terms. He also clarified that American prosperity has created jobs around the globe. Uh, and produced prosperity around the globe, which is absolutely true. The tax reductions for international companies based in or operating in the United States have resulted in hiring across the planet, and it's quite impressive. He went on to a very specific subject, talking about the fact that trade needs to be fair and needs to be reciprocal and brought up that he won't turn a blind eye to predatory trade behaviors, to which I think he was referring to China, who is by far one of the greatest manipulators of the world economy known today. He also addressed the TPP, or Trans-Pacific Partnership, stating he will trade with them individually and perhaps in a group if it's beneficial and fair to all involved. America is also lifting energy restrictions to reduce costs and prevent monopolies in energy creation so that no one is restricted and dependent on one energy company. He also requested that allies invest in their own security and militaries after praising the investments in his own military, addressing that everyone needs to be contributing and putting in their fair share to maintain security against terrorism and maintain a strong peace. He put pressure on allies around the world to quote-unquote de-nuke the Korean Peninsula and block Iran from developing nuclear weapons and stop Iran from supporting terrorists. He also stated that our immigra immigration program is in the past, as he worded it, and he wants to replace that system with one that does not base itself on chains of migrants, instead focusing on the contributions immigrants can provide to the economy and country. Uh, from his speech, he actually had some really great quotes that I liked. For example, to be successful, we must not only invest in our economy, we must invest in our people. And a nation's greatness is not the sum of its production, a nation's greatness is the sum of its people. 
He kept an underlying current of America first, as well as you should put your nation first too throughout his speech, which I find absolutely important. Nonetheless, of the fact, the fact that I predicted he would make these statements just yesterday, because that's essentially what it breaks down to. We cannot run the world as one globe. We have to run the world as a very large collection of individuals, individual cities, and individual nations, each taking care of their citizens, of their individuals who are working their own jobs and living their own lives, which may not reflect on the global state of things. It's a very powerful speech to go through if you know how to, if you know what you're listening to. It can be a bit dry at times. However, if you've ever been to a tech conference, a large tech conference or a large economic conference, you can recognize the language that he was using. When it came to the Q&A section from Mr. Schwab, he actually spoke about how difficult it has been since Reagan to truly bring about tax reform and how the tax reform has brought in investors and business interests from all over the world, including a $350 billion manufacturing plant plan from Apple and the tax relief being passed on to employees of large corporations, increasing the money in their checks, which is something that the media has had no interest in covering, but has made an enormous difference in the economy for January a time when the economy is normally at its weakest, we've seen January slightly edge out and with regards to the stock market, make some amazing, amazing record-breaking uh, heights. He even took some jabs at fake news towards the end of the Q&A section, addressing how harsh the media can be, commenting about how fake they can be before noting that numbers of cameras were being shut off toward the back which brought the audience to ooh, clap, and laugh. I was actually enjoying that part pretty, mu pretty well because he wasn't speaking on a script. He had fallen off the script at that point and was just talking off the cuff. And that's when you really see the president at his best. The audience was clapping more, enjoying the conversation more. And he, he really did show himself despite having to put on that semi-globalist mask that he had to throughout the, the length of the speech. And mind you, I'm not interested in globalist politics, but that doesn't mean I don't recognize the United States' place in the global economy and global influence. Despite this, though, news outlets like CNN and the Washington Post have done all they can to sully and dismiss his speech, instead focusing on the New York Times report from today that Trump wanted to fire Robert Mueller. Unfortunately, this New York Times report provides no actual named sources, instead referring to people informed on the matter, which doesn't mean anything. And uh, unfortunately, while this is happening, the president doesn't even mind because he rapidly dismissed these arguments as fake before taking the stage. And the fact of the matter is, these stories come out at very convenient times. If the president did this, why didn't it come up a year ago? Or well, I guess six months ago it would be, six, seven months ago. Well, that's because they're pushing whatever narrative they can and twisting perhaps the president thinking maybe I should fire him into the president wanted to fire him when the president didn't fire him. And the entire story is, is falsified and pushed to fit a narrative to take attention away from the fact that the president has done amazing things for this country both in the regards to the tax reform, as well as trying to fix the over, uh, overly open immigration policies that we have and create jobs and boosts to the economy. Now, if you want to see the speech for yourself, I've linked it below with a timestamp from when Mr. Schwab starts his introduction, and I highly recommend you watch it, because if you listen closely, you can tell the difference between from when Donald Trump is speaking to the American people, when Donald Trump is speaking uh, to the G20 leaders, and when he's speaking to businessmen. He is a businessman 
uh, first and foremost, he's always been a businessman. And as such, he, he puts in more care with his words, being very mindful of what the people watching might think. Something he doesn't do as much in his speeches to the American public because he mostly speaks to his audience, his supporters when he's speaking in America. And seeing the difference in the way he spoke really does help distinguish what he says for the sake of business, what he says as a salesman, as compared to when he's talking to people just as a person. And we don't elect our president on being a good politician anymore. We don't elect our president on being a good business anymore, businessman anymore. We elect him on being a person. And this goes all the way back to Bill Clinton and uh, Bush the second, who were entirely elected on the fact that this was a person you could have a drink with, or this was a person you would enjoy spending time with. And the fact of the matter is the president knows his audiences. He knows how to address different types of audiences, and he does a very amazing job with it. So go watch the speech, and thank you for watching. I will see you next time.